This year is called the story of the 2017 baseball season. We made it to the dance. So hope you enjoy it. Tonight we celebrate our season. This team played for it all. I say a big thank you as I waited a long time for that call. What a scene in historic race, a sea of black and gold. It's a night we will never forget. It's a story that has to be told. How a team at once nine and seven regrouped and found its way and showed the state of Georgia that Wayne County can play. Yes, Loganville wins the title and to them I tip my hat. They're pitching very good that day. That's all I'll say about that. But this is our night, a night to reminisce so many highlights. To remember a team that never quit, but always continued to fight. We start with another region title. It's become an annual event. We'll start with this amazing playoff run. This is how it went. We started home against Jones County. What happened in game one, we still don't know. But fortunately, in games two and three, we really put on quite a show. In game two, Joshua Gordon steps up big on the mound. He allows just one run. Sophomore James Mullen delivers a two-run shot, his first, his first varsity home run. Late in the game, Griffin Boyd a key RBI single. On the mind, Dan Starling closes it out. This series will be cited in game three, simply no doubt. Game three was one for the ages, a come from behind win to advance to the Sweet 16. One of the best comebacks in the seventh inning that these eyes have ever seen. We trail four to three, heading to the bottom of the seventh, one to tie, two to win. Everyone watching and listening on the edge of their seats, a walk to Cooper Martin is how this inning begins. Next is a bunt to first for a hit by J.T. Crosby. Griffin a bunt down third for another infield hit. Yes, being down by two runs in the seventh did not bother this team one little bit. Hit by Dan Starling to center. This game three tied now at four. Mason Robinson at the plate, ready to bring home the winning score. It's a walk-off wall for the game in the series. The players and fans celebrate. Yes, one of the best come from behind wins in years, to that it's simply no debate. Next up, the University of Buford, a team that recruits talent all across the state. The fact that the team in the state are allowed to do this simply makes me irate. Game one is slugfest. Back and forth it goes, but in the end, it slips away. But the fact that we lost this game had nothing to do with our team's play. A blown call at second base, a strike zone from an up that simply couldn't see. We just had to once again come back in game two to force a Saturday game three. The ball again in Joshua Gordon's hand, and what a performance on the mound. Held the university just three hits, their bats hardly made a sound. Gordon strikes out 12 in the game. We win the game five to one. Mason is a three-run blast, a call that was awfully fun. So it's on to game three at, with Buford, another windy day at the boat. And before this game was over, the Jackets would put on quite a show. Another day I'll never forget. If you miss this game, it must be a regret. Then early 7-2, a sophomore Griffin Boyd hits a grand slam. But two innings later, Buford comes back to tie and puts us in a jam. What a moment for this team, as the rest of the story for all time. And again, if you missed this game in person, well, that's just simply a crime. A 12-run fifth inning, a 19-7 Wayne County blowout. How sweet it is, how sweet it is, was all I could shout. A triple by Cooper, Katie Mason with big doubles. I looked down below and those Buford fans knew they were in trouble. They began folding their chairs and heading to the exit. What a great win. It was on to the Elite Eight to play Carrollton on a Wednesday it would begin. In time, the Carrollton Trojans on the line a trip to the Final Four. The Jackets would sweep the series 8-2 to two and 2-1 two to one, the final scores. Game one, a masterpiece by J.T. Crosby. Carrollton's starter fell apart. This Jacket team simply never would quit. It simply had a lot of heart. What a scene at the bow. Over 900 tickets sold for the event. And the more the crowd got into it, the better things went. We loaded the bases in the third, and then it was three straight walks. The crowd simply got into the pitcher's head. Heck, they even caused a balk. A key RBI by Ford Townsend, JT two for two at the plate. The final score in game eight to two, and Joshua Gordon ready for the game two slate. Game two was a pitcher's duel. 
The Jack is down 1 0 after five innings of play. But once again, a comeback by this team. It was simply our day. David Mosby, a walk to start the six, and Griffin Clark steals a base. And quickly, the 1 0 deficit, we simply erase. We move to the seventh, and Mosley another walk. Now the winning run. Elijah Hartsaw pinch runs and Mason singles in the third, and this is just fun. Joshua Gordon lays down a perfect bunt. We lead two to one and need just three outs. Gans Thornton comes in to close it out, but the outcome is still in doubt. The tie run at first, and Carrollton decides to hit and run. A base hit to the outfield, but Kate Lambert shows off his gun. They send the runner home. He's out and it's on to the final four. We win the game and sweep the series game two, a two to one final score. We would play Locust Grove in the Final Four, and what a scene this would be. In 36 years of calling ball, the wildest scene I've ever seen. Wayne County fans came in buses, cars, and came from far and wide. They were loud, enthusiastic, and definitely on Wayne County's side. And it had an impact once again. It affected the opponent's play. And right off the bat in game one, it would be Wayne County's day. We score three in the first and six in the fourth and lead nine to zero. JT Crosby on the line, and again, his performance quite a show. Locust Grove coach predicted a beatdown, and a beatdown it would be. A 16-1 final and six, after that we hoped to avoid a game three. But the Wildcats would respond and get help from behind the plate. He was a one-sided up from start to finish, that I will debate. Wouldn't give our batters time, but time for them, and then that blown third strike. His credentials should be revoked, and the GHSA should tell him to take the hike. Lost game two, seven, four. So again, it would come down to game three. And once again, Wayne County came back to support. It was simply just great to see. This game was an all-time classic. Again, one I'll never forget. We just had to win this game as next week the state finals were set. Four towns and on the mind, and we jump out to an early lead. We led four to one in the seventh. Again, three outs is all we need. But nothing seems to come easy. And in a blink of an eye, we're tied at four. And this game would head to extra innings, seeing the fans just wanted more. We trailed six to four in the ninth, and our season was on the brink. But minutes later, we were tied again, and Locust Grove began to sink. Cooper Martin hustles down the line on an obvious out number three. Their shortstop is celebrating. Our fans can plainly see. But the pitcher drops the ball. And the outcome now is still in doubt. That's the great game of baseball. You have to get the final out. The Jackets scored two in the ninth, and we tie again and head to a tenth frame. And the emotions of highs and lows back and forth, never the same. Once again, we trail seven to six. Gant Starling is giving us everything he's got. We head to the bottom of the tenth with still just one more shot. This team just refuses to lose, and they would respond once more. A loaded base is hit by Kane Lambert. 8-7 to seven, the final score. The celebration is on at Locust Grove. It was a beautiful sight to behold. It's a story about a team set in history, and again, it has to be told. 9-7 to seven, just a month before, but now heading to the state finals to play for it all. After 36 years in the booth, the state finals I'd get to call. Back in Jessup, hundreds gathered at 2 a.m. to congratulate this team. What a sight that morning in Jessup, and no, it was not a dream. Where else in America do fans gather at 2 a.m. to wish a team well? That's what Wayne County, that's why Wayne County is a great place to live. That's what Wayne County should sell. The excitement you brought to this city, it simply brought joy to our hearts. And everyone was excited, and everyone wanted to just be a part. We might have fallen short, but guys, we finally made it to the dance. With the talent assembled in this room, next year we've got another chance. As always, we pay tribute to our seniors. It's always tough to see you go, but always remember that you're a yellow jacket for life and always part of this show. To our shortstop, Mason Robertson, simply one of the best to play this game. Believe me when I tell you this, we will always remember your name. Now it's back to work as you players have got a chance and a goal to achieve because that's the, that state title is close at hand. That I truly believe. Yes, dreams do come true. And for that, state, for that state title, I continue to dream. I see a state title very soon for this program and this baseball team. Players and coaches, I just want to say thank you for the season that you did provide. For myself and all your fans, it's one true historic ride. 
only for the third time in history had a chance to play for it all. And for me, simply thrilled to be behind the mic and be able to make the call. It's an honor and a pleasure. I love doing the play-by-play. -play. I'm just ready to fulfill the dream and win the state title one day. Again, thank you very much.